In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God. Christ is in our midst. What I'm going to do today is um, share with you a service that hardly anyone ever sees. The priest basically does this service by himself before the liturgy begins. And oftentimes he has a deacon, or maybe just a subdeacon, or maybe sometimes all alone. He might come very early in the morning to begin this service. And it's called the proscomedi, or the proscomedia. It's the service that happens before the liturgy. It's preparing all the elements for the gifts. All the gifts. Okay, in the old days, it used to be that, um, that both the bread and the wine were offered Homemade, you know, made by the hands of the people um, uh, in the church. And like in Constantinople, they had a huge room, especially at Hagia Sophia. But in many of the churches, there was a huge room where the people would bring their offerings. They've made the bread out of wheat. God gave us the wheat. And by our efforts, by our struggle, we made bread out of it. And also, God gave us the grapes. And by our effort, we made wine out of it. And they often brought it, and then the deacons would choose which was the best, uh, loaf or loaves to use for the liturgy, and then also the best wine. So today we have, um, oftentimes people donate and offer the bread, they bake it and they offer it, and sometimes, like my own wife, my own Korea, she makes homemade wine, and I've used that wine now for about 15 years. So... It's a matter of um, if you have someone who can make the wine homemade. Otherwise, you can buy it from uh, uh, church companies, vineyards that are at monasteries or at you know some Orthodox Christians uh, vineyard, something like this. But other than that, we have uh, homemade bread and homemade wine, and these are offered for the use and for the uh, sanctification of the faithful. So the priest takes the bread and the wine and he has everything ready to go and I'll show you the setup for that in a minute. I want to well actually let me show you first. Let me show you what I have here. If you can see, we have here the loaf that's going to be cut. Here's the knife that we'll use. And here's um here's a picture of the spear. This is a very large spear. And this spear um, is reminiscent of the spear that the soldier pierced the side of Christ with um, when he was hanging on the cross. And we have a special prayer for that, which we'll get to. And also, I also use a very tiny spear. And that tiny spear is for taking out some of the particles for the faithful. So we have all kinds of blessings here. Now first, though, I want to show you, before we begin the proskomedi, I want to show you the loaf itself. And I think Mrs. G, Mrs. Goodson, had, um, had a video on here about how you prepare the prosphora. And the end result is this. And I want you to look very closely at this prosphora. Because in this prosphora, we have three, lo three um, lambs, three... Um, See these three right here? Those three in the middle, let's see, I want to make sure I'm seeing it. Here we go. These three, one, two, and three, are called the lambs. And they're in the center of this large loaf. Now, oftentimes we use the center lamb. And this lamb right here will become the body and blood of Christ. It will become the Holy Eucharist. Now, let's see if I can figure out how to go backwards. Here we go. And the Lamb consists of the name of Jesus, or the abbreviation of the name of Jesus Christ, I see Jesus Christos, and then XC, that's the Christos, so Jesus Christos, and then as we go down here, Nika, N-I-K-A, that means victor or victorious one, the conqueror. Jesus Christ, the victor, or the conqueror. Okay, and out of that, and I'll show you how we do it momentarily, out of that will come the body and blood of Christ. After we finish the proscomedia and go through the whole liturgy, 
and I'll explain to you how that happens. And then over here, see that large triangle? That is the Theotokos. We take a particle out for the Mother of God, and um, she stands at the right hand of the Lamb. And then over here, we have the nine ranks of the saints, all the saints. So, we, and I, we can go through that uh, when we do the prayer, but we have the nine ranks, starting with the angels, St. John the Baptist and the prophets, the apostles, and then what, let's go over that way, right? And then I think it's the martyrs next. Let me take a look, because I always read these prayers. Yeah. Oh, no, I'm sorry. It's not the martyrs. It's the fathers. Uh, this one's the fathers of the church, um, the hierarchs and ecumenical teachers. Then this one's the martyrs, all the glorious men and women martyrs. And then this would be all the ascetics, you know, all the men and women who were monastics or gave their life to Christ ascetically. And then way over here, this is the unmercenary physicians, the doctors of the church who never charged any money and healed people. And then this is kind of a special little commemoration. This is, um, first of all, Joachim and Anna, and then um, any of the local saints that are venerated in that area, also the patron saint of the church, and also the patron saints of the day, whatever day you're commemorating, and then the local saints, and then um, we finish that particle. And then finally, this last particle is dedicated to whoever's liturgy we are celebrating. Most of the time it's St. John Chrysostom. Other times it could be St. Basil the Great, 10 times a year. And um, that's about it. I think there's once or twice that you can do the liturgy of St. James, the brother of the Lord, but I've never done it myself. So uh, I think you need permission to do it, special permission. But I know some priests who've done the liturgy of St. James on his feast day, etc. So, but most of the time that's St. John Chrysostom. Sometimes it's St. Basil the Great. Okay, and then... Um, Okay, so that's the, called the seal. This whole circle here, that whole big, that's called the seal. And I think Mrs. Goodson showed you how the seal gets put into the bread. But it's very important that the seal is very strong, like very deep, so that we can see all of the different um, images, all the different figures that we're supposed to see, so that we can, when we do the proscomedia, that we know exactly where to take the particles from, and how to make the right cuts, etc. Okay? So that's the loaf that we begin with. Now, the reason I'm, I'm, using, I'm using a different loaf, I'm using a smaller loaf, because it doesn't have all the detail of that particular seal. The one I'm using has basically, if you can see it, it only has the, um, the center seal and very faintly has... Um, Let's see if I can see it. Over here is the Mother of God, and over here, very faintly, are the nine ranks of saints. But the, the seal in the middle, the seal of Christ, I see, X see, Nika, Jesus Christ, the conqueror, is there. So that's the seal, or that's the loaf that I'm going to use for this demonstration. Let me get a better shot here so that you guys can see very clearly what I'm going to do. Okay, so when we start the proscomedium, after the priest is vested, comes in for the liturgy, he says, um, he bows, and if he has the deacon with him, the deacon will bow as well. And then um, making three bows, then the, then the priest says, Thou hast redeemed us from the curse of the law by thy precious blood. Nailed to the cross, pierced with the spear, thou hast poured forth immortality upon man as from a fountain. O our Savior, glory to thee. And then it's, uh, blessed is our God, always, now, and ever, and unto ages of ages. Amen. And then the priest will begin. He'll, I'll take the spear. This time I'm using the large spear. And we'll make three signs of the cross. In remembrance of our Lord and God and Savior, Jesus Christ. In remembrance of our Lord and God and Savior, Jesus Christ. In remembrance of our Lord and God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Then we'll begin to, to do the cutting out of the lamb. And we say these prayers as we do. We start on the left side as I'm facing. It's the right side of Christ's uh, body as you're facing out. 
And we say, um, as a sheep, he was led to the slaughter. And as a blameless lamb, we go on the opposite side, as a blameless lamb before its victim is dumb. No, as a blameless lamb before its shearers is dumb. So he opened not his mouth. So the first one again was, um, as a sheep he was led to the slaughter, and as a blameless lamb before its shears is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. In his humility, his judgment was taken away. And then we cut the top one. And then the bottom. Who shall declare his generation? And these are all verses from the scriptures, from the Psalms. Okay, then when we have a good cut, and sometimes just to make sure we have um, a nice, even, smooth cut, the priest will use the large knife just to make sure and cut it like that all the way through just to make sure he has a good straight lamb and then we take the lamb out of the loaf and we say for his life is taken up from the earth and you see how that lamb comes out there okay then we can trim off the lamb just to make sure that it's a nice, even, and squared lamb. Perfect. Okay. Okay, then the priest has in front of him the, the lamb, the big cube. Out of this will come the Holy Communion. I see, exi, nika. And we turn it over on upside down. And then what I do is I'll cut it with the knife first to get a good cut and make sure that everything's nice and even. See if I can get... I just heated this one up so it's very pliable. It's not hard like it should be. All right, so. Then I'll take the small spear and then say the prayer. Sacrificed is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world for the life of the world and for its salvation. Then we turn the lamb over again and place it on the discos or on the patent. And I'll even it up so that you can see it straight like that. Okay, it's right in the center, and that's the lamb of God, right in the center of the patent, or it's also called the discos. And then the priest will put his left hand here on the top, and on his right hand he'll go way over on the side here. You see the spear over here? And he'll say, one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and at once there poured forth blood and water. He who saw it has borne witness, and his witness is true. From the scriptures, all of this material comes from the scriptures. And then, at that time, after that prayer of the blood and the water, the priest will take, and I'm not going to do it here, but he'll take uh, wine and a little bit of water and put it into the chalice, and you can see the chalice. You know what the chalice looks like already. This one here. So, wine, you know, maybe up to here. Just a little bit of water. And that'll be ready. Then for um, the liturgy, the chalice will be. And then we go back to the proscomedium. We go back to the loaf. Okay, so, so far we have here the Lamb of God. The next prayer is, remember I showed you on the, um, on the loaf, on the big loaf, uh, the Theotokos, on the right side. So, the priest will make a, take a, out a big commemoration for the Theotokos, and he says, in honor and memory of our most blessed and glorious Lady Theotokos and ever Virgin Mary, through whose intercessions do thou accept, the Lord, this sacrifice upon thy most heavenly altar. And then we'll put it on the right side. On thy right hand stood the queen, clothed in a garment wrought with gold and diverse colors. Right over there. Okay? Now, after that, he's going to take out all the ranks of the saints. And um, let's see, what am I going to do? I will stop the tape. I'm going to make a second um, recording and uh, finish up the proscomedia, hopefully in that second one. But this gets you prepared. You have Christ, the large one is Christ, the Lamb of God, and then the small one over here on his right side is the Theotokos. And we'll take it up from there when we come back.